Okay, so Trojan Energy Limited was formed in Scotland to help everyone benefit from the energy transition, helping the 30% of drivers who don't have a dedicated parking space, as well as everybody else who should have access to an uncluttered urban landscape. The heart of the Trojan technology is our charge point, sunk into the pavement and fitted flat and flush to the surface. There we go. So, hi everybody. Uh, I'm Mark Constable. I'm Head of Business Development at, uh, at Trojan Energy. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking Urban Foresight for the chance to be part of this great event. Uh, they've done some great work in Scotland and also some great work in some places that aren't Scotland. Um, the Dundee City Council Rapid Hub Partnership is one such pioneering example. Uh, I learned a bit about that in my time. Um, go grab some juice there if you ever get the chance. So for my part, I've been around e-mobility now for over a decade. And at some point, I've worked to deliver infrastructure in every segment, public, private, on street, off street, depot, driveway, rapid, fast and slow. And we're going to need all of that if road transport is to play its role in reaching net zero. One size is not going to fit all, but we at Trojan believe we've got the strongest solution for our segment. It's only my third week at the company, and I'm already certain that our technology and proposition answers more questions and meets more of the challenges for the residential on-street charging conundrum than any other solution available. So how does the Trojan system work? How do you get charge out of what looks like a disc on the pavement? A driver simply inserts what we call the lance into the charge point, pushing it straight down to engage the docking mechanism. The driver then raises the handle to lock the lance in place, then plug in the car as normal with no separate activation needed. To disengage, unlock the lance via an app or a key fob, depress the handle and remove it, leaving a flat and flush charge point ready for another user and not cluttering up the street in the meantime. <coughs> Excuse me. The Trojan system uses a 68 kilovolt amp supply to power 15 AC charge points at a time and each charge point can be powered up to 22 kilowatts each. And you probably realize that 15 times 22 is 330 kilowatts. And on, on only a 68 kilowatt supply, the system has a smart charging capability to effectively allocate uh, power to each charge point based on user requirements uh, and the presence of a vehicle. There are good reasons to have a setup like this at the moment because it keeps connection costs right down and also leaves more power on the local distribution network, which is often constrained anyway. And supply uh, power can always be increased later on if it's required and it's possible. The Lance itself has a three phase 32 amp per phase cable uh, with a type two connector for full 22 kilowatt capability. A little bit technical now, but with the advent of 800 volt charging architecture, more cars will be able to charge on this speed at AC. Up till now, 400 volts has been the norm, but with cars like the Porsche Taycan and the Audi e-tron GT uh, bringing 800 volt architecture to the market at the top end, and Hyundai and Kia with their new Ionic 5 and EV6 vehicles bringing that architecture to the mass market uh, in very, very uh, short amount of time, um, this architecture will become much more common. And we think that 22 kilowatt charging will become much more common. A word about the lance. The handle is designed like that. You see it comes up quite a way, but it's to ensure the system complies with the minimum height requirement of 800 millimetres for permanent street furniture. Although it's not permanent street furniture, um, we effectively assume that it is. Uh, and those rules are there to make sure that, the, uh, that any street furniture is visible uh, and negotiable uh, for any uh, street users. The lighting uh, on the charge point of the lance is configurable based on some local requirements. Some planners want brightness and want the charge points to be visible from a long way away. And some local authorities want the, uh, the, uh, the points to be very, very discreet. So the lighting is configurable. The system has been fully weather and impact tested. The company founders have a background in undersea oil and gas production. So they know a thing or two about sealing and managing water in electrical installations uh, and harsh environments. And just on that, 
Trojan is a Scottish company. The founders all come from the Aberdeen area, as where nearly all the employees live around the area as well. They were engineering leads from the oil and gas industry and effectively saw the light and knew that they wanted to work in a more sustainable uh, and uh, a more technologically uh, sustainable uh, and carbon sustainable future um, for all of us. So when we deploy the charge points, we're looking to install effectively 15 at a time uh, from a single supply. We think we'll issue round about four lances per charge point so that there are effectively 60 drivers who can use uh, the, the system uh, in their local area. Early on, there may not be 60 within kind of walking distance, but we've got some trials starting in the Brent and Camden boroughs uh, in London, where we'll be able to test out all of these usage assumptions, all of the utilisation, all of the user experience, uh, and get some feedback from the uh, from all of the uh, the users that, uh, that have been signed up to those trials. And they start within a couple of months. We're part way through installing the infrastructure. So. What's the biggest problem with on-street charging? It's availability. EV drivers want dedicated parking spaces and local authorities are reluctant to provide them a volume. It might be achievable at kind of one uh, space per street, but what happens when a quarter of the cars are EVs? What about half of them? What about three quarters? How do you make parking availability fair at the same time as charging availability as we go through this big transition over the next 10 to 15 years? The Trojan system has both passive and active features to help manage this for all stakeholders. The passive feature is simply the number of adjacent points. Having 15 points in a row on the street naturally increases availability without the cost and clutter of having 15 traditional posts with one supply per post. So it's 15 times more likely for a bay to be free at any given time. But secondly, in the active technology, Trojan has de-ISA. Along with every system, Trojan will install sensors that can be mounted on existing furniture or on new dedicated poles that will monitor charge point availability in real time. Local drivers can get an app notification when a space becomes free, if they flag that they need a charge. And once they've got their charge, they can be incentivized to move, perhaps via a discount off their next charge, if they, uh, if, uh, you know, so that they can move on and leave the bay free for, for the next person. Insight on any given system can be collected and analysed in detail to gauge not just demand in terms of number of drivers and number of transactions, but how much charging these drivers do. And so each individual system can have a usage profile built up and we can answer questions like, uh, is another system needed very, very nearby if there's high demand? Or if there's low demand, should this system be flagged to drivers, Trojan drivers, slightly further away? Again, all the systems are fully configurable based on local conditions and requirements. So EV growth is unstoppable and the time for action is here. On-street charging is especially topical even outside the EV bubble. Only yesterday, Jeremy Vine had a segment on this subject on his Radio 2 lunchtime show, if anyone heard it. It contained a lot of stories of drivers trailing cables across, across pavements and even across roads in some cases. I think we can all agree that that can't take hold of our urban environment. It's bad for people with mobility or visual impairments, and it's bad for everyone else too. At Trojan, we believe we've got the answer, and if you'll forgive me, it's an answer born and bred in Scotland. So we're keen to speak to local authorities and other interested parties across the country who are interested in solving the most difficult part of the EV charging puzzle for residents in such a way that doesn't clutter up public space. So if that's you, we can't wait to hear from you. Thanks ever so much for watching.